right, now being 6 o'clock, I'll call the Monday, August 7th meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. We do not have any appointments tonight. Um, we will want to just jump right into updates and discussions. Anybody have anything new for the agenda? Nope. The only thing I have new well, is um, the bylaw review minutes um, from last week to add those to the minutes, and those were 8-3. And Mark wrote those up, and yeah. I thought they looked really good. Yeah. Okay. I okay. Uh, I do have a couple of kind of these are correspondence things going through Dale's okay. email, but yeah. we you can talk about correspondence them. or talk about our correspondence. Yeah. Okay. Um, Perfect. Right. Okay. All right. So community paradigm executive search for town administrator follow up. They're actually he's holding some meetings tonight. And they're on tonight and. Uh, then they go Wednesday morning and Thursday morning. Perfect. No. No. All right, Cisco abatement filing. We were looking for the. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, timely, wasn't that? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Who would you recommend that we um, go with for counsel to Ellen. represent this? Ellen Hutchinson. Ellen Hutchinson. Of the two, yeah. Okay, well, it was. It was is she KP Law? No. She has her own shingle. Okay, I thought it was KP yeah, Law and Rich Ball. KP or Rich Ball. This is where was Ellen Hutchinson or Rich Bowen? Oh, it was Ellen or Rich Bowen? Right. Okay. Yeah, because his his resume um, it's Ellen was Ellen Hutchinson. Ellen okay. was more about um, seminars, providing seminars, and all. He didn't give any specific okay. cases that okay. he had worked on, big cases, okay. and she has some pretty big okay. case experience. Um, do you know what she charges an hour? Two hundred dollars an hour, I believe. Two hundred dollars an hour. Okay. I can verify that. I have her submission. Could to you me. get it to us? Because yeah. I think um, neither none of us were expecting this to be somebody different than either uh, Rich Bowen or KP Law. But um, yeah, if you could get no offense, I would hire KP Law. Okay. Whoops. Just to be clear, so she, you're comfortable? She's had a lot of experience with this kind of thing. Yeah, she's had some very big cases. He didn't give me any case experience he had in his resume at all. Okay. It was you just someone else. when you came in here that you, right. you were all looking to yeah. use her. Okay. Yeah, Duxbury uses her, Pembroke does, you know, quite a number of cities and towns on, on some of their biggest cases. Okay. So this would be what, um, kind of like an at will type arrangement with her where right. she just does this one case and. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, and she's actually represented Plimpton in the past when Sue Duggan was here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So she's she's been around a long time and has a good reputation. But yeah, he didn't give us any case um, listings. Okay. Yeah. All right. So no concrete. Job. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. If you would give us that. that yeah, that I have it. I'm going into the meeting right okay. now, but um, I do have her. Um, How quickly do we need to uh, let you know? Yes. Quick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's less than a month. Okay, yeah. perfect. All right, okay. thank you. Oh. All right, um, so we can we'll talk about that maybe a little bit later today when we get the information. All right, um, employment opportunities, fire clerk interviews, anything new with, uh, with that? Um, Warren's got it down to two people, and Barbara and I are going to interview them on Thursday, yeah. but we're just waiting to make sure that they can make it. Okay. If not, we'll schedule it next week. Okay. And then we got an email today that um, they had hired someone for the assistant assessor's position. Yeah. Alice and uh, yeah. Mary. Okay. And it's in correspondence. All right. Oh, so that is in correspondence? Okay. Email me something that saying that that was done. Okay. It should be. In it, yeah, the, the, the email is in correspondence. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Tara, did you just talk to us? Um, it's on the agenda. It, it has to do with the um, update for the business certificate. Okay. Whenever you guys get to it, I'll okay. come in. Um, why don't we just skip to it now? Yeah, why don't we skip to it now? You've got okay, stuff to do too. Thank you. Okay. Um, so. Come on, uh, we? Here, why don't you just take a mic? Okay. Um, so last week I asked for permission to speak with town council about the business certificate for Wolf Rock Farm. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got the information. Um, so apparently Wolf Rock Farm is file, filed under an LLC. And so they have to be filed with the state and don't necessarily have to file a business certificate in, in my office. 
the business certificates, regardless of um, what, what it's called or names, um, doesn't allow them to conduct a business. My, from my office, all it is is contact information. So any other permitting uh, or licensing still has to be done. Right. Um, but because they have an LLC, so back in 2013, they were initially issued a business certificate and it was under Wolf Rock Farm LLC. Mm -hmm. And I have had other LLCs file with us because sometimes banks, for example, need to have paperwork from the town that they're conducting a business. Um, but I've since learned that the LLC, if they are filed with the state, the Commonwealth of Mass, that they don't have to do a business certificate through my office. The only, so I looked up their information with the state and there's still inaccurate information the way it's filed with the state. It's listed at 157 Center Street and they conduct the business at 163. Mm -hmm. Also the name of the manager, there have been two since 2003 and none of, they're not there, they're not working there. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, my business certificate was erroneous at that point and I told them in February uh, the new manager that they needed to file a change or a continuance with a change. Um, and the same thing's the case with how they file with the state. So as of today, I looked up their information and it's um, 157 Center Street is where it's listed as the LLC and Elizabeth Fair is the name of a manager who's no longer there. Uh, and then PO Box 153 is the contact information and I don't believe that that information is accurate. So as far as my office is concerned, I'm sort of out of the loop now. Um, so what I did provide you all with um, is our bylaws that, again, my office business certificate doesn't allow them to do business, but um, in our bylaws, it does state that after a hearing, there's a couple of questions I have. If they were, so initially I had thought 163 was the address, and that address is on the tax taking list that Colleen, mm -hmm. um, I think it was July 21st presented, so 163 Center Street is on that list. And the way we have our bylaws written states that um, if they're on that list that all other permitting and licensing departments can either revoke what they already have or not issue something uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. So um, that's all the information I have. Um, so I did have a question about, um, and I would like to further discuss with you later for a bylaw change, um, more specifics about if, if a uh, licensing department denies them. Our bylaws state that um, within 14 days a hearing has to be held. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming it is the licensing authority. But I don't know if that means who denied them the permit or license or if it's or if it's you, the selectman. I would think it would be the licensing. Yeah. The so I've never, I've never come across that. But I, I think it might be something for the bylaw review committee to just make it a little more specific and clear. Um, so even though I'm out of the information now, um, I did want to make sure that that you all knew that there, it, the way it's filed with the state is at 157 Center Street. So it's not even really accurately filed with the state. Right. That's so what I'm. They my interpretation would be they either need to fix this or right. they need to get a business certificate from you. Um, they don't, if they're an LLC, they don't need to get a business certificate as with me. As long as they're licensed with the state, but they Yes, not. but this is not correct. It's not correct. This is how, so they either have to change it with the state. Um, uh, I just think they have to change it with the state. Who, uh, I can, what department is that? It's on the top. Uh, it's just under the Commonwealth of Mass. Business. Yeah. Okay. So that's I, what I printed today. 
And this was all information that I received from Jeff Corbo, uh, Greg Corbo. Yeah, so we spoke about it okay. a couple of times. That was the newest piece of information. He looked it up and thought that they were filed with the state, so then I looked it up, but it's incorrect. Question, Sarah? Yes. The uh, notification uh, yep. of taking land for taxes yep. references 163. Yes, Street. and that's what the initial business certificate is filed with me from 2013 okay. but the was. But with the state is different, right? Right, that's what I'm saying. They're, they conduct business at 163 at the horse farm. But, and that's what's on the tax taking information. But now when I look up their site that supposedly protects them from getting a business certificate with me, has 157 listed. So I don't know what to do with that information. We don't have a contact at all over there? Um, yes, we do. Um, I have been able to get my information through by email to uh, one of the uh, project managers named Rebecca. She's the only way any information will be. I've sent letter certified mail and had it returned. Uh, and the post office has told me at one point that they took the mailbox down so that nothing could be delivered. Is it the PO box that's mentioned in this? No, I part? sent okay. to 163 Center Street because that's where the initial business certificate was and that's where they're conducting the horse farm. So we have an email. <coughs> yes. Does she have a last name? Yep. Nunez. Nunez. Yep. And the title? Do we know if she has a title? I think her title was project manager, so I don't know what project. I don't know. What, she's not the horse manager who's doing the work, the trainer, I think, if you look on the website. But I have seen her title as project manager, and I assumed it was for the horse shows. Uh, Maybe. Maybe. So that's all so, of my discovery information. So what's the net effect of all this? I mean, the business certificate, if they don't have the correct information that's outdated, they can't do business there? Um, the business certificate is just contact information, but in order to go through all of the sign-offs for other, reason, other permissions for the business, I was just one of the pieces of the puzzle. And I think in the future it might be in the town's best interest to put a bylaw in that makes sure, just like liquor Absolutely. licenses, mm -hmm. that they're in good standing with all of the departments, just like the building departments have the tax collector sign off, board of health sign off. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think businesses should also do that when they do a business certificate. So I didn't know that LLCs didn't have to file because I've even have I have a business certificate for Cisco. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had that information where I know it has to be the owner or the signer and it's all under the Mass General Law for business certificates. It gives the specifics. So I did know that it had to be either the owner or the signer, any of the partners on the business. Um, but According to Greg Corbo, um, an LLC doesn't have to file with me, a DBA. Moreover, yes. if, if I read correctly, the uh, Greg's email and the yep. flurry of emails, yep. the business um, not having a business certificate is not grounds for a cease and desist. Correct. Right. Uh, so you know, I have to be a little cautious on that as right. well. Right. That, that, um, I need to get this correct, but it's not going to change the right. So my the yeah, my information doesn't affect um, right, doesn't. the other permitting. Right. Mine right. is contact information yeah. for people who are looking for a name associated with a business, mm -hmm. and they would be able to go to the state and look for mm -hmm. the contact information. They still need to name a person, a manager, or whoever is the signer for that company. Well, it says it. Too. Yeah, that that's as of today. I don't so, know how long this lasts. If it's just well, it says it actually. No, what, look here. Yeah, so it says. Read that it sentence right there. Right. Dated involuntary dissolution by court, court order, or by the SOC. So I don't know what that 630, means. 6-30-2016, so is that when it 
unless inspired. they redo one, unless, I don't know the details. That's why I wanted to show you that. Okay. So that would be not a question I can answer, but I found it interesting. Okay. To update those sites in my past for insurance, did you have to do a rework? It's not that easy to make an amendment to one of those. So I would be interested to know what that date is. If they don't renew or change, then they wouldn't need to Part do a business certificate. Like the tax ID, the, the, it's a rework. Okay. So what do we do? I mean, what's the next step? Is do is it Greg Corbo or? Um, I think it has to do with the other licensing authorities who, who, are, like for example, the Board of Health has um, licensing for their horse shows for. Right. Um, I'm sort of out of the equation in terms of a business certificate, so I don't need to okay. deal with them. But if there's any other permitting or licensing, that's the information I discovered and, and found. This would be the information that they would be using, and it's not accurate That's what they referred to in okay. an email saying that they were okay. registered with the state, and that's what, what I printed today. Okay. So... But uh, good suggestion on the bylaw review. Yeah. If you have, if you have an electronic copy. Yes, I do. I have two. Uh, there's that. also another one because of the. Mm, I wrote it down. Um, because of the Municipal Modernization mm -hmm. Act, um, there's information on license and licenses and permits of delinquent taxpayers in our bylaws, mm -hmm. section one. And it says that the tax collector shall annually furnish to each department aboard the list. Um, when I spoke with Greg, we decided that better language would be periodically. It doesn't have to be annually. It can be updated at any time. So there's a couple of pieces of language that would help to make our uh, local bylaws correspond with the mass general laws the way they were just wrote, or the, the way they're with the state now. The other one was um, in the same bylaw. Um, it says um, other municipal charges for not less than 12 month period. So that, that can get taken out. So I already have a note. I actually wrote it right there. Yep, gotcha. So, to yeah. Next so meeting. that, yep. yep. So there should be two possible changes in the same general bylaw for the bylaw re review committee since all of this was looked at. So you're going to let Ellen know. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. I don't know. We're, I don't know what you should do, but well, thank you for the update. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Did we, you want to talk to us too, Art? Um, yeah. As a, as a taxpayer in town, and that's what I'm speaking as of right now. I think it's deplorable that our community allows someone to not pay their taxes and yet generate income from activities within the town. Uh, we need to change the bylaws that that can't happen. Uh, and I, I can't tell you how strongly I feel about that. Um, I had lengthy conversations, probably half hour to 45 minutes Saturday night with both Michael, no, wait a minute. Now that's who he told me was Saturday. He's sometimes Dana, but he, anyway. Um, and also his latest attorney, who isn't up to speed on any of this. Um, and he was on vacation in Maine. Uh, both of them called me. Uh, with regard to the horse show on Sunday, and uh, you know, I, I I told them how exactly how I felt, um, and I told both of them that with the legal agreement that the Board of Health had with his two attorneys and town council, I told both of them in separate conversations that I I consider the and the board considers them spitting in our face. Now, I couldn't put it any stronger than that. So, what are you going to do? Well, I don't know. Um, 
I think maybe we park the fire trucks all up and down the road. The town owns within 10 feet of the side of the road. I don't know. Something did did they have the show? Um, they, they had the horse show yesterday. Did, it, did they use the building itself, do you know? Um, I rode by, I didn't see anything. Um, they did not want a health inspector to go down. Sure. And I said, that's fine. I said, but I will be there. And I said, if I see anybody cooking, I will close it down personally. Um, and, and you'll be off. So you spoke to them Saturday night as chair of Board of Health. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, the expectation was there were going to be 200 people there. No. There they, was they less have always than claimed less, okay. so we don't need it. So they're not re reaching the threshold where we have documentation of what they need to do in mm -hmm. terms of a large gathering. Yeah. And it, it seems like part of our problem at this point is we really don't have a procedure for permitting or what permits are needed for small gatherings. And it feels like we have to get that together. Um, uh, I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, we, as uh, I think you and I spoke earlier in the day, Mark, it was because of the motorcycle rally potentially happening, you know, with 12 or 1,500 people. And we went, wow. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, porta potties and potable water and EMTs and, and what do we do? So that's why we put together the large event which contains a packet of information right down to emergency planning. Here are the exits and, and should something bad happen. So there is a whole, it's a whole written packet that they have to fill out. Uh, all food vendors have to be inspected. Um, um, and approved in advance. I mean, there's, there's a, a myriad of things. And so the corn mazes have to do the large event mm -hmm. because sure. they clearly get right. more than 200 people. Sure. So, and, and we do go over, we inspect the, uh, um, the food service areas. And, and again, you want to make sure you've got enough potable water and, you know, all of that sort of thing. So the, we can uh, put together a small event. Um, you know, under the Board of Health, we'll have our hearings and we can put it together. Um, however, going beyond that, should some people choose to ignore the law, which in my firm belief is, is what's happened here, uh, in many cases, at least with the Board of Health, um, when you have a, a legal agreement and nothing is done, um, that's just ignoring things. So. Um, I would like to see things put in the bylaw, and again, it would have to come from a law firm as to what we can do and, and, and to close it down. But that's it. Um, that whole situation over there with those three pieces of property, um, we get more pieces of mail returned to us, undeliverable. We're told it's a P.O. box in Plimpton. We're told it's here. We're told it's there. It comes back. Um, it, it's the whole thing is, a, in my opinion, is a Ponzi scheme. Why don't we, you know, we did this with the permitting. Um, why don't we get the right people in the room and we hash out how this should work from our perspective? I think Kathy Drynan is actually working on it. She said she was going to put together, um, she said we needed some entertainment um, type of bylaws. But is that going to take into account the police, the fire, the zoning? I believe so. Yeah, okay. she said, I think Plimpton needs to work on some business entertainment and events bylaws to make sure that this type of thing doesn't happen. She was going to work with the um, bylaw review committee because they said if you've got some ideas yeah send it their way so she said she did um, which is good but I would also ask the Board of Selectmen to to honcho that through the bylaw co review committee mm -hmm. so that we don't wind up where we were this past spring just I, I still think um, we need to get well, yeah, and, and we're meeting, Alan will be here on Wednesday. We're all meeting on Wednesday. We can certainly bring this up then. And um, I gave Kathy Allen's contact information, so she was going to contact him directly with um, suggestions that she had. And 
council is going to be involved with in this process of the bylaw review too so we should definitely be able to put something together yeah i mean and this isn't going to be zoning it would just be a municipal bylaw which is easier to yeah and and do. who can order the also we need to get down to who can order this a cease and desist should it come to that mm -hmm. um and, and let's have that be clear also in the bylaw that mm -hmm. uh uh, because this this was is frustrating. Um, I think Kathy being probably the most passionate one, um, and I'm not too many steps behind her mm -hmm. in this situation. Um, uh, it, it's just it's just wrong. Um, the tenants are in in court today trying to get what the Board of Health couldn't get done. And, and that's sad. That's one of our charges under state law. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that they're taking action. But we still need some sort of a cover sheet, like Tara suggested, that has everybody sign off that all the pieces are there. Yeah, and I, it seems to me like that would be the document that hopefully Kathy's working on that right. maybe has to go through bylaws, and I think it's the only fair way. It's really the fair way for both sides, for the town to know, for, and for people putting on events to know. Right, and right. It, in the interest of full disclosure, I live on a place where events occasionally happen, and I think there's a fair amount of um, lack of clarity at mm -hmm. this point on wanting to do the right thing, but what the right thing is. I mean, right. I think right now we don't know exactly what the right but thing is. But there's an interim stage between now and town meeting, and I think we need something in that interim stage, because we can't, if we do it through the bylaw committee, which I think we should, they're working on enforcement anyways right now, right. Uh, that's not going to happen until May of next year. Um. So is this maybe something to bring up with um, Greg Wednesday night, since a lot of this committee Rich, will, will be in the room? Um, yeah. Rich Bowen? With Rich. Uh, Rich. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And maybe he'll have some sense on what degree we have to wait for town meeting or what we can do um, in the meantime. Um, well, it, the piece I see missing right now, today, is that we don't know that every board has integrated and that they've signed off. We don't know that the fire and the police and the Board of Health and the zoning is all on the same page well, or even is aware of it. Yeah, John, um, and I agree. Um, in, in our large event, um, there is there is a sign-off for police, for fire. Uh, but again, who knows better than the fire chief if you need an EMT on site? Sure, exactly. That. that there's only one person there, uh, or his designee. Mm -hmm. uh, the same with uh, police details. Right. The chief, uh, they're the ones. And I think that the, uh, um, again, that large event does do it. I, I went the extra step being a, a parent and a grandparent. Uh, when the young lady was in before the Board of Health, I said to her, now, you may also need a business certificate, which you'd have to see the town clerk. You may also need to talk to the police chief. You may also need to talk to the fire chief. Um, and she has started asking questions. No, no, that's not Board of Health. <coughs> you go in those directions. And I, also, I said, if you're going to serve wine or beer, you need to go before the Board of Selectmen. Oh, I don't think we're going to do that. I said, well, then you don't have to worry. But, you know, there's some directions you have to go. Um, just trying to give her a handle on, you know, what happened. So I, w I was told by 163 that they had contacted police and fire. Now, I haven't verified that with either chief, but... But if, if there's an event that started today with somebody else, There's no single coordination of how the flow works, right? I mean, you know what you're doing within the Board of Health. Yeah. And I get, so who should be that? Is the Board of Health willing to step up, or do you think that responsibility lies in another spot? I mean, we, we can put it together, and I mean, we, we have for the large event with everything. We right. talk about EMTs and, and right. potable water and 
porta potties and you name it. I mean, it, it's it's a lengthy mm -hmm. communique. And can we, we get also a copy? Have one for small events. Yeah. Can we get a copy? Um, sure. Is it online? Is it on the town's website? I. They told me the attorney told me Wednesday night, uh, Saturday night, that it wasn't. Okay. Now, but, but we can get it online okay. if we have. Oh yeah, it. sure. But, yeah, it's easy enough. If it's not up there, um, and I, I haven't gone through the laundry list online. Again, I come back to the permitting process we have in place for um, buildings, etc. It was the same issue of you know not everybody understanding where they were in the cycle. And we finally agreed that um, the building agent uh, administrative assistant, Kathy Wright, would be the person. Mm -hmm. Not that she owns it all, or the building, but that she would make sure, one, it has to go, and if taxes aren't paid, end of story. But there was a flow that each person, so when they came, came to the end, you knew it was done. Everybody had bought off. Excuse me, I do that with our permits that we issue. That we oh, issue, guess, right. right. I do have a checkoff sheet and I can get that to you. And it's, I can't, won't, I want a certificate of insurance and it's in their boxes, I can get it to you. It might help you with something. Well, if you get the- It's taxes around it, everything. Why don't we put this on the agenda? Because yeah. it seems like this needs more work. And I can get it. And oh. um, talk it, about it It's a work week. in progress right. at, this, yeah. at this juncture. If you could get us a copy yeah. of the uh, package you have, because that you've got the ninety percent of it. I mean, the other pieces are just will blend them in. Yeah, I think I think perhaps going forward, it, it, when we have a town administrator, yeah, uh, <laughs> um, I got the right word. Um, that that might be a, an initial point of contact with someone walking into the building, going, "Hey." Um, at, at least say that person could say, okay, you need to go here, yeah. or there, or uh, you know, some sort of direction, and then also maybe let Tara know because that's the first office right. you, you stick your nose into. Maybe there's a sheet that says this, 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 and this, and exactly. You know. That's what I'd like to see is yeah, exactly. a handout that says this is what has to happen, and it has all the players. And then we need to designate somebody to be, if you got a question, start here. Yeah, and, and also a place for, just as we have with the building permit, for signatures and a date. Exactly. Right. So exactly. that that can be turned in at the end. Right. And goes into a file, we know. Everybody's yep. signed off. Yep. Yeah. Because I'm just, we got the Board of Health, we got the Bylaw Committee, Zoning, Fire, Police, Town Clerk, Legal, and Board of Selectmen. I mean, there's a fair amount of people who have to go through and make sure that, you know, their piece is signed yeah. off. If they have a piece, because especially they, in, in, a small, in a small gathering, it may be that there's no authority. Exactly. Right, instance. and you would just sign um, off and say, yeah. um, so, NA, not yeah. applicable. Yeah. Exactly. Nor right. do we want to put people through more than they need to go through. I mean, to get all those people signed on is already a big project. Um, no, we do it with the permitting now. To the degree we have the authority to even request a permit. I mean, at some point, there's stuff that people can do with their oh, property. Sure. And, and I think that's what we have to sort out. Right. We're only talking about, you know, the 2% that are extraordinary in that they're so large they're out of the ordinary. We're not talking about the average event for somebody. Well, and I, I mean, this is where it gets hairy. I mean, what do you do when you have a birthday party for 50 people? I mean, is that a small event? Is, and then you get into, is this a private thing? Is it a business thing? I mean, it gets pretty So we ought to talk it out and see what legal tells right. us. Right, so yeah, let's talk it out with Rich yeah. on uh, Wednesday and yeah. kind of... I'd rather talk it out rather than not do anything. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I if mean, there's nothing we can do, then there's nothing we can do, but at least we need to explore right. what our options yeah. are. Yeah. To okay. John's point, with the permitting process, the way it's set up, if if someone wants to rebuild their deck, conservation just puts NA right. and gone. Right. You know, um, uh, if they don't need to get involved, or if the highway department doesn't need to, uh, that, that's great. You jump over. Right. Uh, but they've seen it need to. and they've signed off on it, and that's the key. Yeah. Yep. Is that they're aware? Yep. Okay. Um, I mean, in, the, in our case, 
we don't want to, in the Board of Health, we don't want a deck being built on the top of the septic system. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, that's all, you know, that we'd look for uh, in the case of a deck. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, let's, let's put some, this on the okay. agenda for next week, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it again okay. after we meet with Rich. Perfect. Next step, Wednesday? Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday at 7 o'clock in the small meeting room. Yeah, I, I, this week it's full here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we can report about it next week. All right, so um, fire EMS. Do you want to report on what we've got going with um, appointments? Okay, so we have four consultants that we've reached out to they've all submitted proposals three have confirmed the dates um, and you have those mm -hmm. uh, the last one I'm still waiting on I hope he'll confirm this week and they'll be set up for uh, what is it 21st 21st and the, the 28th, and the 28th. Yeah. yeah so we'll do two a night perfect and then we'll make a choice perfect all right um, anything on solar um, no, I, I reached out to uh, Rayo late last week. He got back to me and said he'd be in touch today. I think everything's in his ballpark now. We're waiting for him to approve our attorney's language adjustments, and uh, we're waiting for him to supply the information that in, so that an income analysis approach to valuation can be done. Perfect. All right. Um, townhouse communication meeting, follow-up on memo sent to all departments. Um, you sent a second memo out, Bree, and what, we had eight people that oh, had got some more. expressed interest? Excellent. What are we up to? <laughs> 14, fantastic. No, I didn't think Maureen was, was going. Maureen Springer? I'm Colleen Thompson, Maureen Springer, Ken Thompson, Art, Harry, Deb Batson, Nate Sides, Steve Lewis, Amy Cronin, Deb Anderson, Ethan Stiles, Great. Ted, Toronto? Yep. Yes. Yep. Thank you, John Wilhelmson and Alan Wheelock. Terrific. It's a good group. And the three of us. Okay. Um, all right, so that will be this Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the small meeting room, and we are posted, so we're good to go on that. And I also spoke to Bob Carlin. Okay. And he has things in the pot. Okay. So you should be there. Okay, so he'll be there as well? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, Perfect. I talked to him after, too. <laughs> All right, BOS and bylaw review meeting follow up. What a good meeting. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I, I think uh, it's a good committee. It's got good, strong people on it, and I think now it just needs to work. I'm looking forward to Wednesday night. Is it get my yeah. meetings, whichever one we're doing with Rich Bowen and the bylaw? I'm looking forward to him meeting with them, too. I hope that happens. I'm sure. Well, I can't yeah. imagine that it, that it yeah. won't. So. Did you have anything you wanted good. to add about the final um, No, I think it's a great committee. I think they have the right attitude. I love that they understand that this is not a one-time thing, that it's ongoing, that that will be a living document. And, uh, yeah. and we got a talented group of people that are willing to work. So that's a good combination. Absolutely. We're in good hands. <laughs> All right. Um, we, we already did the town clerk update. Um, correspondence. Um, okay. So um, this is in somewhat haphazard order. Uh, the vendor warrants were local computer store $948, Obershawn $64. I think that was for a tarp. Uh, from Deb Stewart, I think we talked about this before, her email dated today, uh, notifying us that the Board of Assessors has hired Allison Mary as an administrative assistant in the, uh, to the assessor's office. Um, they look forward to working with her. And, um, um, yeah. Welcome, Allison. <laughs> uh, so I'm just seeing this. This is from Michael Lemieux uh, to Bree. Do you know about this, Bree? Um, about a parcel of land? He came into the office today and it abuts his. Um, the old Benavides property that yep. they renovated on, on 104 Main. Mm -hmm. When so they it broke up the property, he kept they kept some of it to themselves. Right. And there's a piece that the town owns, he said, 
that they would like to purchase for themselves. Okay, so this says the parcel that Jen and I, that's uh, Michael, um, are interested in purchasing and butts our property on Main Street is relatively small, 0 0.92 acres and unbuildable. Um, so I guess he's contacting us in the hopes of purchasing it, um, which is uh, it's a, process. a not unthorny issue. Extremely. It becomes. They told them to start with us. Okay. Yeah, nothing's easy. I assume that probably makes another buildable, buildable lot if it abuts his. No, it said, said it's not buildable. No, uh, it's not now, but they acquired quite a piece of land when they took the Benavides and they split it off and sold, I don't know, two, three, four acres with the house. I think they have quite a bit more. And this may just allow them to open it up. Mm -hmm. but so that, that's one issue. There's the issue that the town, I think, probably has to put this up for auction to be able to even offer it for sale. Right, we do. Um, and he said he wanted to hay it. They were going to used to be a hay field. Yeah. Okay. Way back. That's what he said for the use of it. Well, I'd be reluctant to sell any town property because it may be something we can use for affordable housing. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, to follow up on your point, Mark, we had uh, a request for another piece of land to be sold. Well, there's like three. Yeah. Requests. And uh, the town tax collector, treasurer, asked us not to do anything because she was going through a six-month cycle where they go to land court, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And at the point when that was done, then we could address them all in the entirety. So probably we need to find out where... She is on this In the process. process. Yeah. Okay. It seems to me, I'm not sure if the six months are up since I talked to her or not. I can't remember. Yeah, I mean, this has come up a lot. I, in the interest of full disclosure, I'll say I live near town owned land that I have offered to purchase many times, and um, it's a challenge and something we'll want to explore. Uh, I it think we probably challenge. don't want to take this on right now. We got more than enough on our plate. Exactly. Um, uh, and, and at some point, we will have to address it because it keeps coming up. Right. It, it, I'm not, this is my first time through on it, but it does seem to me if we were to sell any land, we would probably want some restrictions on it, wouldn't we? I mean, um, I don't. I don't even know if you can do that, but I mean, at I least. I don't know if you can do that either. So maybe that's a legal question we should ask. Um, the, what, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just like another time. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> another time. <laughs> it's a huge subject. Can I um, forward that email to one of you? Would you like to respond to him? Sure. Send it to me. Yeah. Okay. And just I'll just tell him that you know. Process. Thank you for his inquiry, but at this time we're you know we'll take it under advisement and we're not taking any action. Thank you. Um. Uh, so this is a reimbursement request for $14,750 as part of Chapter 90 for, um, I think it was for design at Ring Road and Main Street. Mm -hmm. And there's a check here, and I think we simply have to sign so the document. Okay. So I'll send this along <coughs> your way. Thank you. Um, this I just received just this moment from the Department of Current Commerce. It has to do with the 2020 um, census um, and some things the town may have to fill out. I will be glad to take this home and take a look at it and see if I'm who or if I can do it or who can do it. That's what you left in my box. Mark's going to take it home and read it. Okay. All right. So that wasn't correct. Yeah. Okay. okay. Back with it. Okay. Um, this is an appointment sheet for a uh, Stephen Terry uh, uh, appointment to police sergeant um, uh, indefinitely, and another one for Brian Cranshaw. They're both sergeants now, right? Yes. Yeah. And I don't know what this page is about. It was a note from Tara. Pardon? Isn't that from Tara with some notes on it? July 1st, 2017 to a definite to correspond with last year's paperwork address. Oh, so we must have already done this. 
Well, I think we did it last year, but we just did it for the one for ah, six months, okay. and now right. it's indefinite. Yeah. Right. So I make a motion that each um, be appointed to this position indefinitely. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank uh, you. Oh, two of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is a letter, I guess, dated um, August 7th from Francis Perfettuo. Uh, my name is Frankie Profetio and is part of the Eagle Scout project that was approved by the Board of Selectmen for benches on the town green. I will be holding a car wash on Sunday, August 13th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and we'll be doing fundraising at the transfer station selling pre-sale tickets. Where's the car wash? I this sounds like it would be a small event. Fire station. Fire station. And <laughs> therein is the problem. That's the problem. Therein, it's huge. Well, this, he actually would need a sign off because if he's using town property for this car wash, then there needs to be sign offs. We signed off for his Eagle Scout project. Right. But not for the car wash. And in his Eagle Scout project presentation, he spoke about fundraising. Okay. So. He Let's already see. did go to the chief. Okay. He went to um, highway, got permission to go there Saturday. So, and the chief was all for it, I think, because okay. that's what he's doing it for. Okay. I think so, you're right, though. I, I'm, I think, we're going to sign it off. But I, I think said to him if it we needs need that form. To, okay, do you want me to go get yeah. it right now? Yeah. yeah, even if we fill it out for him, I think that, so, and then we'll circulate it because yes. people need to know. Okay. So why don't I just do a book? We'll Perfect. Do, we'll make who's going to vote. All right. I'll make a book. Well, um, providing uh, Frankie gets the all the necessary um, sign-offs, I'll make a motion that we authorize him to use town property to hold a uh, car wash um, as a fundraiser for a Eagle Scout project that he is working on. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Um, and then the Pumpton Halifax Express, uh, there was the usual article about our goings on last week. Uh, the centerfold is the DARE Camp 2017 at uh, Whitman Hanson High School. Uh, photo of Police Chief Pat Hillen, um, Plumpton resident Sean Gan Ganley, um, and Plumpton residents Jenny Stanley and her brother Levi, and their counselor Alexis Stanley. Great pictures. Looks, Looks like, like they had a really a nice time. turnout. Yeah. Very good time. Um, and then the other major point of thing in the paper is Zoning Board of Appeals has three hearings, I think, next Tuesday evening. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, I can gleefully report that that concludes correspondence. correspondence. John, did you have a couple things you wanted to add? Yeah, these are things I pulled off of uh, the town coordinator's email. Uh, and this come by, you familiar with that? Vaguely. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but I think this is part of procurement. Mm -hmm. They want us to, uh, it says, according to our records, your organization has not taken steps to update your fiscal year in combines. This five minute ensures that bids, requisitions, and purchasing. So I don't know what that is. I mean, it's want me to pursue that? I don't want procurement. <laughs> I'm on it. Well, just to fill it out. Yeah, fill out yeah. the form. And, yeah, I, right. Uh, it, it probably is required for us to participate in, um, sure. you know, different uh, state programs. And Mark, you know, from my perspective, maybe you could give me a 15-minute tutorial sometime on procurement, because I'm not familiar with all the state. I will, won't need a full 15 minutes to give overall. Oh. I know. <laughs> I'm glad to sit with you. Uh -huh. In fact, I, I, we can do as part of a meeting, probably. I mean, really, it's sure. simply the chart. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'll bring that for next week. Yeah, okay. why don't we put it on the agenda? Yeah. This is a virtual town meeting announcing that they've got a new training schedule. Um, and you can go on and do it online, and it's free. Hmm. For what type of training? Uh, I think there's a whole list. You pick what you want to to do. This is a virtual town hall? Yeah. Oh. So the website. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so I'm glad to take a look at that and report back on what's on there. there Great. Maybe Perfect. there's good stuff not there only for us, but for everybody else in town. I should have thrown this in your box so you read it. Yeah, <laughs> right. um, Forward. <laughs> Plimpton Municipal Aggregation. I think we know this is to Dale. Uh, it's from Denise Allard from the Colonial Power Group just says that uh, it's not, the aggregation is not going to be as quick as we thought because of the number of orders. So Okay, so it's still in process. It's still in process. Okay. So we put that in correspondence. This is about procurement bulletins. Okay, why don't we, uh, Mark, and look at that and report back next week. Okay. MCPPO program. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Open up the registration. PPO. Office of Inspector General. Massachusetts Community. Hmm. I don't know. We'll have to go in and check it. I'm, I'm glad to figure out what that is. This is you. part of that combine, apparently. Oh, nice. okay. I think that's how we fill it up. Okay. This is an invoice from uh, App River, and I looked on um, App River is a software package, apparently, that we have. I don't know what it does. So I'm going to check this out Perfect. with Michael Rodriguez and find out whether we even need this. Okay. Apparently, it's overdue, but no, it isn't. Due by 8.15, so okay. we got some time. Perfect. All right, so that's all the correspondence. Um, all right, board's goals for coming year, financial management. Um, we still have not seen the um, final draft. I'll reach out to Monica this week. I think she's been on vacation to uh, see how she's coming with that. Um, public safety, anything to report? Um, they met a couple weeks ago. Uh, the architects had sort of drawn out potential locations for the building. They weren't quite happy with it. They're, um, they're finessing that a little and should have something soon. Um, they're moving forward with um, um, uh, P3, the uh, uh, management consulting firm, is going to meet with planning board just for an initial chist chat to be on top of it, and they next meet the 23rd. The uh, okay. real bottom line is everything's moving forward apace, and everything so far is on budget. Very nice. All right, technology, anything? Uh, no change since last okay. week. All right, um, grants, no update there. Um, I still need to get Heidi to come in and see us. I don't think it'll happen until um, September. Okay. All right. And as long as we get a date, that's fine. Okay. And then um, volunteerism, anything? Uh, no. Okay. It, yeah. We have a lot going on, but it's the same people. You mm -hmm. know, the communications meeting, the meeting we're having with Bernie Lynch for the search for town administrator we're still somewhat at a loss how to bring in new blood well a good suggestion came out of the bylaw review committee meeting about um, creating for lack of a better word a job description for what these different committees do so that we can better communicate what the activities are that this um, group of people do so that you know someone may uh, make peak their interest because it doesn't have to be cookie cutter. You don't have to be a, you know a finance major to be on FinCom, and you know you don't have to necessarily be uh, you know fit in the box to um, to serve on the committee because it's always nice to have different ideas and and experiences. So you know that you know, would be something we need to work on. You really need common sense, a willingness to work as part of a team. And a willingness to put in the time. Yeah, That's yeah, willingness to learn, right? Yeah. Beyond that, we'll. <laughs> we will train. <laughs> we'll see if we pass that test. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how we'd go about getting descriptions. I think they'd have to write them up, and they're so busy with everything yeah, else they're it's, doing. That's not. Yeah, yeah. now's not the time. Now's that, not the time. Yeah. But it's it's a good thought um, yeah. as we look out to the future. Okay, Art, did you have a? Yeah, just just with the way I do it, John, is I I feel I see a solid citizen. I said, you know something, you'd be good for the board of health, or you you'd like to serve <laughs> on the zoning board of appeals. <laughs> you have, and you go out and you sell them. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, you got the correct venue because you know I think uh, we should have a handout, and you should be chief volunteer. <laughs> we didn't get Art the list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think Art's point, though, is a really good point. It may be that the best way to foster continued volunteerism is just that word of mouth. Oh, yeah. And, um, and even if it's the same 15 people that are doing everything, encouraging all 15 or 20 to get out there and just keep calming and yeah. just keep um, um, planting seeds. Um, most people, I find, are, not most, I shouldn't say, but some people are uh, intimidated in that they they think they're going to look maybe stupid on something because they don't know and yet all of us started getting on a board that we probably had no experience mm -hmm. and sitting there the first years kind of you know you kind of absorb and then after that it takes off mm -hmm. um, even you know and even one step before that is sitting in on a few meetings um to see if it's a fit and the beautiful thing on that is 80% of this, besides the common sense and the willingness to work, you sit through a few meetings, you go through a year or so, and you know as much as anybody. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Very good. Good ideas. All right. Um, dates to remember. Our next meeting is on the 14th. We meet on the 21st. We'll, and on the 21st, we're going to have some of our fire EMS consultants. Two of them will be coming in. We'll have one at 6 and one at 8. Then we meet on the 28th, and at this point, we just have one consultant scheduled at 6 p.m. to come in and speak with us. Then uh, we're meeting 8, 9, Wednesday, with um, Rich Bowen and some department heads and chairs to, um, to talk strategy uh, regarding issues that we're currently facing. And um, that is, I think that's all we've got so far for meetings. Um, minutes, we've got minutes from 724, 731, and our meeting with bylaw D183, and Bree sent me the 724, they look great, so. I've got one other meeting um, I forgot to mention. Uh, Tara wanted uh, somebody from the bylaw committee, Ted Toronto, he couldn't make it, he's out of town. Uh, to sit in on a uh, conference call with the codification people. Okay. So Alan Wheelock and I are going to sit in with Tara on uh, not this Wednesday, a week from Wednesday, the 16th okay. at 11 o'clock. And uh, it'd take about an hour, I guess, for them to walk us through how this codification sort of service works. Terrific. And I'm sorry, who was that with, John? Uh, it's general, it's called general code. It's the codification service that was approved at town meeting. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Under tariffs. So under the town clerk. Are we approving them? Wednesday, yeah, we are. Wednesday the 16th. Is it like an open meeting or will they? No, so it's going to be, no, I'm not no. going and I don't no. think Mark's going either. No. It'll no. just be no. Tara, John, and Alan no. just listening to or participating in a conference call. So, okay. So, so it doesn't need to be posted. And it'll be in Tara's office, most likely. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So we've got the minutes from 724, 731, and 83. Uh, I've read all the minutes. I didn't have any uh, amendments. Has anybody else read the minutes? Or? Um, I have. I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of 724, 731, and 83 as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, now on to Selectman Rants and Raves. Do you want to go first? Or sure. Is it okay? If, or do you want somebody else to go first? <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I'm starting to forget what I've raved about. <laughs> Though I do have a, this is an entertainment rave. Um, I don't know if people go down Wednesday nights on uh, Plymouth downtown. Uh, they have free concerts at the Pilgrim Park right next mm -hmm. to Plymouth Rock. And they are fabulous. I mean, they are really good. They have really good people. They attract a crowd of a couple of hundred, 300 people. Uh, people bring their chairs and picnic baskets. And they also have uh, some uh, food trucks that pull up. Um, Alden Park is one. Mm. So they have some pretty good food that you can also buy. But most people bring a picnic and they have groups. And it's a real good time. So. Go to it. If you're there every Wednesday night uh, until, I believe it's the 
second Wednesday in September. They usually don't go into September, but they had a rain out, so they moved it into September. Where do you sit, on the hill? I sit on the hill. They call us the hillbillies. <laughs> 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 but you, because my wife and I bring chairs, and uh, usually some of our kids come, and we just bring books, get there an hour early and uh -huh. just read. And it's a gorgeous view when you look out over the boats in the harbor and Clarks Island and Saquish. It really is pretty. What time does it start? They usually kick off at 6.30. Uh, they run 6.30 to 9.30. Oftentimes, they'll, have, they'll be there early at tuning up, mm -hmm. so you get some there. It's a great venue. Nice. Yeah, great, great suggestion. suggestion. They, they say the same thing. Yeah. They really have a it's time for something that's free in town, it's wonderful. Very nice. Something free. All right, my um, rant and rave is, is a rave for the Bylaw Review Committee about how lucky we are to have such an excellent group of volunteers that um, you know some of these people have served on committees in the past, some are serving on other committees now, and that they're willing to come in and, um, and look at something that's really important to all of us, and that they are addressing um, very uh, blatant issues that um, we need to change, and uh, but, you know, just very grateful to have such a good group to uh, to speak about this on our behalf. I agree. And to you, Mark. Okay, so usually I don't have a, a rant. My slight rant, I think, is is thinking about small events and the complexity of writing this up, and um, and the complexity of doing anything in the governmental world, just because it is so complicated. And at the same time, a little bit of my rant is, it seems like part of our job is to simplify and see through this and, 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 and clarify to the point that we make sense out of it. Um, my real rave, though, is something else. Uh, yesterday afternoon, nice, beautiful summer afternoon, I'm dri driving down Maple Street, heading to Kingston to pick up my 92-year-old mother for dinner and reminiscing about the pleasures of that in and of itself. And there before me is a lemonade stand in the middle of Maple Street, and a wonderful young man named jo Joe Corso who's selling lem lemonade, well-spoken, smiling, courteous fella, great lemonade. First time I had lemonade on a summer afternoon <laughs> in years, um, and it was special. So keep an eye out for Joe and his lemonade stand. Is Good. he a Dennett student? Um, I don't know. He must be. I, You know, if he is, he's sort of the, um, the prototype in terms of just being a courteous, sweet young man. Oh, very nice. Mm. Very nice. The kids all right. on Street, my dad used to travel that all the time. And the kids would always be selling lemonade on that street. Yeah. Oh, and the funny one, we came home from church one day and he said, those kids got me today. <laughs> I said, what happened? He said, they gave me water and they were selling lemonade and told me, sorry, Mr. Martin, we ran out. <laughs> <laughs> he said, we're just looking at me and said, you're a good business. <laughs> they always sell lemonade on that street. Very cute. cute. Yeah. That Very is cute. cute. All right, do we have anything else for tonight? I think that's it. All right. Uh, what do you have, Art? I would like to give the Board of uh, Selectmen, uh, the Board of Health, oh, large and small event okay. printed material. Uh, this is the initial letter covering the large event, okay. and we say here, although uh, small events don't require the permit, we do offer written guidance. Great. Um, as, as far as safety and, and all sorts of things. Um, this is when we adopted the large event. Okay. Uh, going back and our notice. 2014, yeah. Requiring that yeah. and then uh, the checklist and application for large event. Oh, very nice, you got it all. And yeah. outdoor event summary. Okay. So. Nice. There you have Perfect. the whole package. Awesome. Well, thank you. We'll uh, bring this up with uh, with Rich, and we'll be able to report back uh, so next, next Monday. If you can use any of it, Absolutely. you're welcome to. Great. Yeah, okay. thank you very so, much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we each get copies of yeah. all that? Sure. And this is the checkoff list that we use. Okay. Oh, good. Let's add this to it. Yeah. Somebody? yeah, let's yeah. add that. If it doesn't apply to them. 
Okay. I think maybe on their list they could add liquor license and then it would bring sure. us into it. Yeah, Are absolutely. Are you going to be serving alcohol? Yes, absolutely. then seize like them. Okay. But I'll send this whole thing to okay. this is what we use. All right. So, anything um, more? I All right. Have this. Okay, so thank you. For Frank. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Um, I'll make a motion uh, to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Bree, for this. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Good night, everybody. Uh,